There are only a few series that come to mind when I think of series that perfectly encapsulates what it means to be epic fantasy. You got Stormlight Archive, Wheel of Time, and of course, Lord of the Rings. Now, I'm not saying they're the only three series that are truly epic fantasy. I haven't read every series there is. And a lot of series have aspects of epic fantasy within them. But of the 75 or so series that I've read, those are the only three that perfectly represent what it means to be epic fantasy. That is until now. After finishing Of War and Ruin, I can confidently say that The Bound and the Broken by Ryan Cahill belongs in that conversation. I'm not saying that this is going to have the same impact on the genre that those three series have had or ever be as well read as those three series. But by Blade and by Blood, it belongs in the conversation. So why should you read The Bound and the Broken? Simply put, it's one of the greatest epic fantasies out there. But this wouldn't be a really good why you should read video if all I did was say it's great and that's why you should read it. So let me give you a few more details. The story takes aspects of some of the greats of our time and then adds a unique twist to it. Examples include a boy bonding with a dragon egg and being destined to be the lone dragon rider taking on the evil empire. Another example is having three best friends that are forced to leave their small town. Using these common tropes, makes the story easy to follow as characters are developed and the world is being built. But each of these tropes have something unique about them. For instance, the boy who bonds with the dragon isn't a 14 year old. Instead, he's a young man who's been training with the sword his whole life. That one simple change makes the rest of the story that much more believable. Plus, it's not as straightforward as just taking on the evil empire. There are legitimate and justifiable reasons for the Empire, and there's a bigger war going on between the gods. As far as the three friends leaving home, in other stories I've read, one of them, let's just call him the Chosen One, takes the lead and the other two basically carry out his will. That's not how things unfold here. Each of the characters have their own paths that they're following for their own reasons. Sometimes those paths coincide with each other, sometimes they don't. But my point to all of that is to say that Cahill is able to have this large, complex world and story that keeps you guessing what's to come next without it feeling overwhelming because he's simply building off of what you already know. Now this does lead me to my one major critique of the series and that's of Blood and Fire, the first book in the series, is a bit too predictable. It follows the tropes too closely. But while reading it, you can see him dropping the seeds and building the foundation to leave the tropes behind and make the story his own. But a lot of that effort doesn't really come to fruition until book two of Darkness and a Light. But it does do a good job of introducing the characters and laying the groundwork and building the world out and just making the story seem familiar and comfortable and easy to continue with. Now going back to why you should read the series, I mentioned at the beginning how it perfectly encapsulates what it means to be epic fantasy. Now what do I mean when I say that? First, the stakes, the plot, the storylines have to be epic in scope. Not only is there a quest to take down an evil empire against all odds, but there's also a war going on between the gods. I'd say that qualifies as an epic scope. The plot lines are masterfully done. Although there are probably around 20 points of view, Oftentimes, these points of view will overlap, such as Adolin and Dalinar in The Way of Kings. You have two point of views with different perspectives, but in the same location with the same basic storyline. This allows the reader to have a different side of the story, but without getting overly complex. Based on my count, the most amount of storylines that are going on at the same time was around eight. And even with those eight storylines, they are constantly converging and diverging from each other. That makes it fairly easy to see how all the storylines tie together and for the reader to connect the dots while experiencing more of the world, developing closer attachments to each of the characters and advancing different parts of the plot without any of the storylines feeling like a side quest. This also helps to balance out the pacing of the book. It never moves so fast that you get lost, but never so slow that you're bored. The action scenes are perfectly balanced with the more relaxed storytelling parts of the book. And speaking of action scenes, if you like large scale battles with shield walls and two huge armies going after each other, you'll have plenty of that. 
If you like one-on-one -on -one duels, you'll see some of that too. Small teams fighting together, yeah, there's going to be a lot of that. And I hope it goes without saying, you're going to see some dragons fighting each other as well. The main plot is about taking down the Empire, but each of the villages, cities, and classes of people or creatures you meet all have their own politics, their own way of thinking, and their own reasons. It's not as simple as Empire bad, everyone else good. Sometimes the enemy of your enemy is simply another enemy. Sometimes they're not friend or an enemy. Maybe they agree with you in principle, but think they have a better way of doing it. Can people and countries put aside their differences to work together on a bigger goal? It's easy to say, but very hard to do. And sometimes your so-called enemy is nothing more than a group of innocents who are trying to live their lives and had no say in any of the politics. Are they worth killing because they live within the empire? Are they worth saving? Do the ends justify the means? Throughout this entire series, the characters are faced with realistic, ethical, moral, and political challenges that will keep not only the characters, but the reader wondering if they made the right choice. Next, it needs to have an epic world. Now, I already briefly talked about the politics you'll see. On top of all of that, you'll spend time in small towns and in the empire. You'll see cities in rebellion, cities underground, and cities hidden by glamour. You'll quest through forest, mountains, and tainted desert lands. While reading the story, you'll learn how to speak some of the old tongue, along with learning about the relationships between the seven gods and the fall of the order. On top of this vast world with its deep history, you'll meet dragon riders, wyvern riders, elves, dwarves, giants, urex, rangers, assassins, fades, druids, mages, animal companions, a group called the Knights of Alcaron that are sort of like warrior angels, and you'll even hear a story or two about griffins. It has everything except maybe talking trees. And finally, there needs to be a strong, genuine connection with the characters. And none of the characters in this story are filler. They all have their own motives. Whether that's a bitter old man who's seeking revenge, a group of friends trying to survive and protect each other, a son trying to live up to their father's expectations and his reputation, a couple wanting to find some place they can settle down and be happy, or a man who just wants to feel something, anything, again. Whatever their motives are, they all have their own reasons and stay true to who they are. You'll experience heart-wrenching losses and sacrifices as well as victories, reunions, and unrestrained joy. Anger, grief, jealousy, happiness, surprise, fear, disgust. If you can think of an emotion, you'll see and experience it while reading The Bond and the Broken. To add to the emotional roller coaster that this story takes you on, no one is safe. With that said, no one is introduced with the purpose of just being killed off. They all enhance the story and bring something to the story when they're getting page time. And if or when they die, the reader and the characters will both feel their loss. It is the only pain your body truly remembers. When you think back on a broken leg, you do not weep from the agony. But when you remember, you will never look upon your loved one's face again. It cuts as fresh as the first day. So that is why I think you should read The Bond and the Broken. At the time of this recording, there are three novels written and two novellas with the plan for it to be a five novel series. So you got The Fall, which is a novella that you can read either before or after of Blood and Fire. This is a story of one battle told over and over again from four different points of view. If you want something fast and action-packed, this is a novella for you. Of Blood and Fire, this is the first novel in the series, and it's more of a slow burn story. So it's kind of the complete opposite of what you see in The Fall. Although a bit predictable at times, it does do a great job of laying the groundwork for the amazing story to come. Of Darkness and Light, this is book two. It's filled with a ton of action and tension and suspense you really start to see just what the protagonists are up against and how long their odds are of actually taking down the Empire. The Exile is another novella. This you should read between books two and three. 
This focuses on one man's story, an eldest son who's been wronged by the Empire and seeks vengeance. Not just for the sake of paying back those who hurt him, but also to pave a way for him to return back to the land, the home, the friends, the family he loves. Of War and Ruin, Dragonbound by Fire, Broken by Death. At what cost is it worth to take down the Empire? How low will you stoop and what are you willing to sacrifice? How strong are the ties that bind us to our friends and families? What lengths will you go for them? And is that bond worth more than the safety of the world? So that's it for this video. I hope you check out The Bond and the Broken by Ryan Cahill. It's up there with Stormlight Archive is my favorite series of all time. And it's just been getting better and better with each book. So I really do highly recommend checking it out. And until next time, may your fires never be extinguished and your blades never dull. Bye.